What's up folks, welcome back to another video and today we're gonna be focusing and see how we can get our MongoDB integrated. For this one, we're gonna use something called Mongoose. Again, if you haven't used it before, it's pretty simple. We're gonna walk you guys through and don't forget the idea behind this entire series is to kind of walk you guys through and show you how we can connect every single piece. If this is your first time on this channel, this is where we help you become a full stack developer. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and we'll be right with you after the pause. So without any further ado, let's take a quick cap on what we've done in the last video. In the last video, we talked about how we can run multiple process with concurrently. So technically this will combine these two command that we want to run, which is the server and then the client. And again, we added a couple of prefix such as the end for the name in order to have something that looks uh, really nice. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on how we can configure Mongoose into this entire app. But if you guys remember from the first video, we did install a total of five packages with more goose already included now before we go any further for those of you that might be like okay what the heck is mongoose well mongoose think about mongoose as an object data model for mongodb so if you've used sql before my sql think about it as the sqlized version but for mongodb okay all right anyway too much talking left dies right in, into the code all right before we do any code let's check and see if you guys do have mongodb install if you do have it in order to check and see if you do have it installed can open your terminal and type the command which mongo now if you see something like this that means that mongodb is installed into your computer and you can kind of feel free to follow along however if it does not install for you guys don't worry we're going to show you work around that in order for you to work with a remote database but assuming that you do have it let's get the ball rolling all right first thing first i do require mongoose and then i'm going to go here and type mongoose.connect which is the way that I'm going to use in order for me to connect to Mongoose. Now, if we take a look at here, it takes two param. The first one is the link of the connection, which means wherever that connection is going to be. That could be pointing to a local environment, which means this is where MongoDB is running on your local computer. And again, that could be running into a remote environment, which can be MongoDB is running into a totally different server that could be located anywhere in the world. And where you put that is within that simple string. And we're going to walk you through and show you how that works together. And the second program here is more like options that you can pass to MongoDB. Now in this object, I'm going to pass it to option here. And the one I'm using is use new is new URL parser and use unified topology. The first program, which we'll remember, which is something that will be pointing to either a local environment or remote one. So in this one, I'm going to start with something called Mongo, MongoDB slash localhost. And then the name of the database we want to set. Now, this could be any random name it doesn't have to be a specific name of the database so i'm going to call this one something like mern youtube some something very basic for you guys to see what i'm working on all right great now that mongoose should be connected again should be connected we have no idea if this successfully connect us with MongoDB. Now, the big question is how can we verify that our connection to our database has successfully been made? If I run this application, I'm gonna use NodeMon. If you guys don't know what that is, check out the entire series. I have no way inside my terminal to let me know either or not the connection has been successfully made. So how can I verify that this been successfully connected? Well, one way I can do that is using a listener that's called mongoose.connection and that on in this list Listener is a listener that can listen to different event. One of them is something called connected. And this is the one that will tell us either or not that Mongoose has been connected. For this one, I'm going to add a very simple message, something like Mongoose is connected. And if I save this one and we start my server again, and there we go, ladies and gentlemen, my Mongoose connection has been made. Now check this out. In case that there was an error, something like this, and I didn't see anything and save that, of course, I won't see this message because I instantly know that this connection hasn't been made successful. All right, I'm going to reset back what I did. I'm going to put the right name in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a quick way to verify that Mongoose has successfully been connected. So for those of you that do not have MongoDB installed, don't worry, we got you covered. What you need 
need to do is you need to head over to Google and type MongoDB, click on the first link you see, you're going to sign in if you already have a MongoDB account. If you don't, you might need to start over. Now this will take a little bit of time in order for you to get this set up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sign in, I'm gonna enter my email and I'm gonna enter my password and I'm gonna log in. So once you log in, if this is your first time, it might take you through an entire tutorial to kind of set you all up. But what I really want to do is wherever you have this section, MongoDB Atlas, I'm gonna click on the cluster. I'm gonna click on build cluster and I'm gonna select a cluster that's available for me. Now there's different version that you can select. I'm going to select the free one. Of course, this is just for testing purposes, but if you're building a real world application, you might need to consider one of these options. I'm gonna click free version and then I'm gonna choose my provider. Now they support AWS, Google, Azure, and they have different region that they can have it to. One of the downside about the free version is if you have it inside the North Virginia region, then if that region goes down, then you lose the entire things. That's one of the reasons that the paid options are more likely for you, then you can select multiple region in case one of the region went down, then you still have your database available in another different region. Now, this is of course the entirely scope of this tutorial, but we're gonna focus with just the one region that we have. And then on the cluster name, we can leave this one as default for my case. I'm just gonna go here and change it to something else. I'm gonna call this one YouTube DB and click on create cluster. Now this will, this will take seven up to 10 minutes in order for them to provision a cluster for you within that region that you select. So give it a time, go do whatever you have to do, pause the video and come back until we have that created. Welcome back, believe it or not, our cluster has been created and this is what we have. All right, we only need to do three things. The first thing we need to do is click on wherever it said database access and we're gonna add a new user to that database. Now I'm gonna give this user my username, something like Aximus Sterling. I'm gonna set a very basic password like Merry Christmas, something like that and show it. I'm gonna copy this password somewhere cause I'm gonna need it later. Once I have that, make sure that you do have read and write access to that database and then add that user. And then that first part is done. Again, they're gonna deploy every single changes that you've done. The second thing we need to do is head over the network access and then add on, click on add IP address and then click on allow access from anywhere. Now, this is just for demo purposes. However, if this is a real world application, you definitely don't want to allow access from anywhere. You might need to select that option, but for my case, I'm gonna click anywhere. It's gonna give me this. Again, this means that anybody any from anywhere can access that database as long as they know the username and password of any user that has access to that database. Now I can leave a comment right here, demo only to let people know that this is only for demo and click confirm. And the status of the user will be pending. If everything went well, we should be seeing the status change to active and the second step is done. The last thing that we need to do is click on the cluster and then wherever you are inside this cluster, then click on connect. And then within where you can connect to that database, there are three options. The first one, we, the one we want is wherever it said connect your application. I'm gonna click on this one and copy this entire URL that they give you here. I'm gonna take this URL, install a variable here. I'm gonna call this one MongoDB URI and then paste this link in there. Now, once you paste this link in there, the only thing that you need to do is wherever you have the password, you need to change it to whichever password that you guys enter for that user. Remember our password was Merry Christmas. I'm gonna copy this one here and we move the password right here. And then the only thing we need to do take this URL and copy this variable now paste this variable right here and then just put this just put this in here and what that means is we saying all right try to connect to this database if this don't happen then connect to the local one as a fallback. Now, again, you should only do that for those of you that don't have MongoDB installed. And one of the key aspect of this is if you go in that route, then you definitely need to consider adding this value into a secure files where people won't have access to your database value. Again, do not let this expose. For the sake of this, we're gonna leave it like that. But at the end of this series, we're gonna walk you guys through how we can hide those things using something called Dot NV. And now if I save this, and there you go, ladies and gentlemen, my database is connected. If I try to remove something, mess up a password and try to save it again, 
and there you go my database was not able to connect because i don't see that connected i don't see that message from my database so everything seems to be working fine all right so now that we have successfully connected to our database of course there are more to do but let's go ahead and start adding some data into that database right so how can we do that well in order for us to do this i'm going to go here and start defining what they call a mongo schema i'm going to start here and define a schema for my case what i'm building is very very simple so i don't need a very complicated schema what we're building is just a black post it's not going to be something with a very complicated schema so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go here first get that schema from mongoose and then once i have that schema then i'm going to start defining my blog post schema and we're just gonna uh, just gonna initialize a new instance of that schema so i'm gonna go here at schema and then within that that's where we start defining those values that we're going to be using within our schema for this one i'm going to be using something called title which is going to be a string and second something called body that's going to be the one containing the body of what we're about to write and lastly but not least we're going to set up a date of when this data was added for this one i'm going to be adding more key value pair to this so i'm going to add the type here to be string and I'm going to add a default value to be equal to date.now which is going to automatically enter that default value for me. So all we have right now is our schema. Again, this might be a little bit too much because we're doing everything in the server. But the reason I'm doing this is because I really want you guys to kind of see everything end to end before we move them into separate files so once we have the schema the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna need to define what they call our models so for this one i'm gonna go here and uh, add our blog post and we're gonna use that we're gonna use mongoose that model in order for us to register that model we're gonna call this one blog post and then we're gonna pass it the black post schema Again, all we do is in order to register our model, we give it a name and then we pass that schema that we want to register. Again, our, our schema is very super basic, nothing fancy, just very simple dummy data for you guys to see the entire flow and how we connect everything end to end. All right, once that's done, at the end of the day, all we care about is the model. All right, once we have our model, then we can start uh, adding saving data to our Mongo database. So how can we do that? We're gonna first define a couple of data. For this one, I don't want something crazy. All we need is we're gonna, add a, we're gonna add a very basic title. For this one, I'm gonna add a very simple title, like let's say, welcome to my YouTube channel. And for the body, I'm just gonna add something very basic, like something I help folks become full stack developers and vlog about my software engineer and then if, if that's even the word. But anyway, the long story short, these are the data that we're going to save into our database. Now, in order to save that blog post, I'm gonna use a particular method called that save. And the way that save itself work is it wants you to create the new blog post instance of that uh, model. So here's the model. This is the model. We're gonna need to create a new instance of that. And within that instance, this is where we pass the data. Remember, we already have the data already, which is this. So we're gonna pass this data into that new instance of the model now again again that new instance of the model that come from this new instance here and the reason we're doing this is because we're using the that save once we have that new instance all we have to do now is use that new instance and you save and this one takes a callback which is in case there is an error then we can kind of handle that error in case something happened so in case there's an error then we handle that error then else in case that that data has been saved then we console log a very simple message again let's review everything before we go into air into any crazy thing so what we do is we connect our mongo and then we define our schema which is how our data is going to be and then after that we we define our model we can use that model to start saving things into our database because we're using that save then it does require us to create an instance of that model and pass the data that we want to save in there so technically if i run this if i hit save that should we start my server and it should automatically go ahead and save that data for me so let's take a look and there you go ladies and gentlemen my data has been saved all right so my data has been saved right which is great which is fantastic well the big question is now is how can i see those data well if we go back to that connection let's find out where those data are going first right according to because we're using this 
this link, the data is going to whichever, wherever this link is coming from. Remember that was the remote database that we set up from here. So how can we see it? So if you go back to the cluster, wherever you have the cluster that you created, then what you need to do is click on the name of the cluster, which is YouTube DB. Then once you click on it, then wherever it said collections, you click on collection. Once you click on collection, then make sure that you click on this and you're seeing the black post, the collection that you wanted. For my case, the reason I'm seeing this is I'm referring to that one as a collection. And that's what I'm seeing right here, which is the data that I saved earlier, which is fantastic. You can even search for something here. For example, if I wanted to search for something that I, that had a different date, I could have searched for that one and just click find to search for it. Again, I won't see any data because I don't have anything like that that's available. But if I find one for something that we created earlier, something that's available, and there you go, ladies and gentlemen, I was able to find that one that has the value of that date. So it's really super useful in terms of everything that you can do from here, which is fantastic. Now, at least we have one data into our database. The cool thing with this is you can, you can even click this button to insert document, which means you can manually add data into that collection. We're not going to do this. Now, check this out. Now that we have one data, how about we set up a route into our server where we can consume that data. So now what we want to do is check this out. We do have a route. What we're going to do is whenever the user hit this route, we want to send actual data that are coming in from the database, not those dummy data. So in order for me to do this, I'm going to go here and comment this one out. And wherever you have the model, again, remember the model is how we are going to create and uh, create and search thing from our data from our database. So I'm going to copy this value and go to wherever I have this route. I'm going to start writing a couple code here. I'm going to find everything within my database by an, an, by an empty object. I'm going to use that then and that catch. And inside that then and get that catch, I'm going to go and write a function. Again, all I'm doing within that then is write an arrow function. The same thing inside the dot catch write an arrow function. This one's going to return the data and I can go here and console log that data for now. And the second one is going to return an error. So I can go here and technically do the same thing here and console log the error right here. All we're doing is we're searching everything from that and we just console log in the data. So let's take a look. So if I save that, everything seems good. My database seems to be connected. And if I open that route and go to that particular route on port 8080 slash API, which is that particular route and I'm getting the same old data, which is not what I want, right? But if I take a look at my console, I'm actually getting the data that I was expected. So what is the issue here? Well, the issue is we're still sending this data. So I'm going to go here and remove that and I'm going to move this rest.json, which is a way on how we send those data. So now I'm going to be sending this actual data that is coming in from the database. So that's the actual data I'm now going to be sending back to the user. So if I save this one and go back here, refresh this and ladies and gentlemen, we are getting some data right here. Now to test this actually work, I'm going to go back to MongoDB and add a very simple data such as something like title, something like super dummy. The second one is I'm going to add a date, something like very dummy data and insert them to make sure that we can see everything coming up. So now we do have to data into our collection. So if I refresh that endpoint again, it should be coming up with these two data. So that's working end to end. And I'm also seeing the data in my console log as well, which is fantastic. This is great. There's a lot of work that we need to do here, but just to kind of review everything we've talked over so far is we've defined our schema, define our model, we save a couple of data and we use that endpoint to send data back straight from our database to the client. In this video, we did everything with using a connection all the way from Mongo, MongoDB at last. In the next video, we're going to show you guys how we can do the same thing using our MongoDB and tools that we can use in order for us to see the data inside our MongoDB connection. If you don't want to see that, then in the next video after that, we're going to show you guys how we're going to refactor that code and kind of separate them into folders and bring the little pieces together to really connect them and still have the same functionality to this. So see you guys in the next video.